Hi guys, my name's Livy, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about all the horror movies I watched in the month of June. I've got a big notebook here with me because I had to write them all down. This month was a big one for me in terms of watching a ton of horror movies, so I wanted to make sure that I wrote them all down so I can go over a few because I know last month I forgot a couple that I definitely wanted to mention. So we're going to go ahead and start with what I forgot last month. And the first one is Triangle. If you've never heard of this movie, you need to go watch it. I'm pretty sure I saw it on Hulu. And at the time, I'd never heard of it. Possessed by Horror, um, who is a horror YouTube creator, she mentioned it from a few years ago, like a video that she had done and it looked really good. So I just wanted to watch it. This movie blew me away. Quick synopsis is that a girl joins a party of friends, a couple friends that she knows to go on like a little boat trip. Their boat ends up getting caught in a storm and they get cast overboard. A big like cruise ship ends up finding them and they climb aboard this ship only to find out that there's really nobody on the ship. And I don't want to give the rest away. I think this video is going to be spoiler free for all the movies that I watched. So I'm not going to tell you any more because it is like a really interesting twist. And it's a twist that happens. There's a couple twists, but it's one that happens kind of midway through the movie. It's not too far in. So I don't want to tell you kind of the plot of the entire movie, but it's a really good one. It's like a psychological horror. And if you're into that kind of stuff where there's a lot of confusion on time and repetition, I advise you to go watch it. It blew me away. Like it was so good. And I can't believe I'd never heard of it before. It does have the same actress from the newer Amityville Horror. Her name is slipping my mind right now, but she's really great in horror films. She does a great portrayal of the character she's playing. And there are some sad moments and some like deeper psychological moments. So if that's up your alley, I definitely advise you to go watch it. Next up on the list that I forgot from last month was Ouija Origin of Evil. And again, Possessed by Horror, one of my favorite horror YouTubers, she said to watch Origin of Evil, not necessarily just the original Ouija. So I ended up watching that on Netflix and I really liked it. It's about a family, a mom and her two daughters who live in a house. They do like seances. The mom performs seances for people and that's her living. That's how she makes her living. And her younger daughter ends up contacting what she thinks is their father who's passed away. And shit just goes awry from there. So I really liked this one. I thought it was very fun. I think it's set in like the 80s or something, maybe the 70s or 80s. But I think it ties in really well. It has got kind of conjuring vibes, um, a little bit of like exorcist vibes, but it's really good. The main younger girl in it is actually in another movie I watched this month, which was Annabelle Creation. So she, I guess in those couple of years, did a bunch of horror movies. She's so good for how young she is. She's an amazing actress, especially in these really creepy roles where she's possessed or she's around a lot of possession. Um, so Annabelle Creation, I'll kind of move on to that one next. It was okay. The storyline is interesting um, about a family, just a mother and father who have a young daughter that live on a farm and their daughter passes away kind of in an unfortunate car accident. And a couple of years later, a orphanage of young girls end up staying at the house the couple of things that will kind of help them heal and that it's a big farmhouse and they have lots of room and these girls don't really have anywhere else to go. So they end up going there and one of the girls ventures into the deceased daughter's room where she was told not to go and ends up finding the Annabelle doll. And it all kind of unravels that they tried to channel their daughter. They thought it was their daughter coming through this doll and realized that it wasn't something else had come through. So they've locked off that room and put Annabelle in a closet with a bunch of different signs of faith and Christianity so that she's kind of concealed. I did really like this one. I think I actually liked it better than Annabelle, the one about the younger couple with the baby. I liked that it is like an orphanage of girls staying there. So there's a lot of different personalities and nobody really believes what's happening to the one girl who gets possessed. Um, so I think it adds a lot of different dimensions. You feel really bad for this couple because they just wanted to talk to their you know, dead daughter and they kind of found a gateway through this doll and obviously it wasn't their daughter. So you know, it's people who have the best of intentions who are very sad and trying to heal from the loss of you know, their child. And unfortunately, something else had a better idea about coming through. 
Next up on the list, I'm going to really lightly touch on, and it was just a bajillion Halloween movies. So I watched, for the first time, I watched Halloween 2, 3, 4, H2O, and Resurrection. And you might be thinking, Livy, you skipped 5 and 6. I did because they're not free on any streaming sites right now, so I am going to go back and watch them. But the reason I'm just lightly touching us on these is because I'm going to be doing a Halloween movie franchise ranking video. So I need to finish up watching the couple that I haven't watched, which will be like the Rob Zombie version in 07 and then his second one he did. And then I need to go back and watch five and six. So just for a quick touch on them, I really did like these movies. There are a couple that are better than others. I enjoyed two a lot, carrying on directly from the first Halloween in 1978. It picks right back up and I really appreciated that. I did enjoy three as well, which I knew was already kind of a weird one, Season of the Witch. Um, but people had told me like, actually it's really good. It doesn't tie into Michael Myers, but you'll still probably enjoy it if you like the Halloween franchise. And I thought that one was kind of left field, but I did really enjoy it. Um, H2O was interesting. Um, I love Josh Harnett and obviously Jamie Lee Curtis is back in the franchise in that one. It's got an interesting storyline. I think H2O and 4 are a little confusing to me just because they don't follow the same like life patterns that they create for Lori and other ones. Um, 4 is about a young girl who is supposed to be Lori's daughter. And then in H2O, she has a son. So that confuses me a little bit. But if you take the movies by themselves, I do actually enjoy both of those quite a bit. Then there was Resurrection I also watched, which is about a group of college students who go and stay in Michael Myers' home. And he happens to show up on Halloween while they're filming this like reality show. So that one was good, very kind of predictable for the early 2000s, but it was still kind of fun to see like the cheesiness of it all. I will say that one barely has Lori in it. And I don't mind that Lori's not a main part of it, but they do, we catch up with her in the beginning and then she's not in the rest of the film. So I thought it was a little bit disjointed. I'll be going into way more detail about those films when I do my ranking video. And I'm really excited for that. I'll probably do it in a month or so when we're a little bit closer to Halloween ends coming out but I do want to watch all of them and be able to put them in an order of how I enjoyed them. Next up on the list, I have, I keep looking down. So if you guys are seeing me looking down, that's why. But next up is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Another favorite YouTuber of mine is Halloween Happy and that is Sam, she lives in Salem. And one of her favorite films is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I had never seen it before. Obviously I've seen the posters of like the cheesy clowns. And I just thought it'd be fun to watch. So I think it was on HBO Max. Ended up watching that and really liked it. Like, yes, it is so cheesy and so 80s that a spaceship lands and it ends up being like a giant circus tent and clowns that take over an entire city. But I think it's kooky enough and really fun that you can actually get into it and enjoy it. The fact that like they throw popcorn at you and the popcorn turns into like bugs or something and the way they capture everybody is from like giant like cotton candy cocoon nests. I thought it was really fun visually and all the bright colors make it like a good time, just a good fun movie to enjoy. Next up on the list is a movie that I remember hearing a little bit about, um, but I haven't heard anybody else talk about it. And that is Freaky with Vince Vaughn. This movie was so much better than I thought it was gonna be. Like I thought it would be kind of fun, but I didn't think I would enjoy it as much as I did. And to give you like a really quick synopsis, I guess the overall, it's like it's like Freaky Friday um, and a slasher film have come together. So there's a young girl who lives in a city. She's like the school mascot, kind of made fun of. She's very quiet. And there's a serial killer in town. She happens to run into him and he tries to stab her with this knife that is like a voodoo knife. When he stabs her, they end up switching bodies and Vince Vaughn has to befriend her school friends to convince them that she swapped bodies and the serial killer is really in her body. And there's a party where everybody, you know, shit hits the fan. So it's a really good time. I would say definitely watch it. I think it's on, I want to say HBO Max, um, but it's super fun. If you grew up liking Freaky Friday and you love slasher films, you're going to love this. It's just a good time to see Vince Vaughn like portraying a teenage girl 
in the funniest way possible because Vince Vaughn is like what like six five and you know deep voice but he has to befriend her friends and she has to be like guys it's me I you know I'm so and so so I thought it was a really good time and I definitely say check it out if you guys like kind of like a slasher comedy freaky Friday mix up next up I want to talk about the boy and the boy two so I had seen these movies on Netflix for a while but I never really knew what they were about I knew there's like a doll involved. I just decided to watch them a few nights ago and I ended up really liking these. The storyline goes something like there's an older couple and they hire a nanny who's coming over from the United States into like England, you know, the outskirts, kind of the countryside. And she's trying to escape a bad relationship that she just got out of. She goes there and realizes that she's gonna be nannying a doll, a creepy looking doll that's very like realistic looking with porcelain features. And the family, the couple is going away for a while. So she'll be just one on one with this doll in this huge countryside mansion. And obviously, we come to find out that the doll is alive. When she leaves the room, he will move around, he will do things for her, he will act out. So there's a twist, I don't want to mention it. Um, it is interesting that the older couple kind of end up escaping having to take care of this doll. And they kind of want to be released from the death of their son. And so they leave it to her. They leave him to her for her to look after. And I'll talk a little bit about Boy, The Boy 2, which has Katie Holmes in it. Um, similar kind of storyline. It's a couple who has a really bad experience of a break-in in their home. Um, and their son and the wife suffer from that quite a bit the son has stopped talking so they decide to get out of the city and go to the countryside and they're staying in the guest house of this countryside mansion from the first movie the boy ends up finding the doll buried out in the backyard and it gets him he ends up talking again and kind of finding his voice again but Bron the doll is influencing him in a negative way so i'll kind of leave that one at that because that one has twists as well Honestly, both of these films are really great. The first one is so creepy to me. There are sweet moments between the main character and Brom, the boy, the doll. Um, but So you're kind of not sure if he's sweet or what's going on. But it's still creepy. Can you imagine nannying a doll and all of a sudden stuff's getting moved around the house? You know, your clothes get moved around your jewelry goes missing your shoes go missing like that would really freak me out so i liked the concept of that if you were to put yourself in that situation how creepy that would be and then the second one was really good as well you really see katie holmes as a mother who's gone through a lot of difficult times um and trying to heal herself and her marriage along with her son who is not verbal at that time so you get to see the struggle that she goes through and the faith that she puts in this doll because her son has kind of started to regain his voice by hanging out with this doll. But then it's a give and a take, you know, what is really going on with the doll? What kind of bad things can be drummed up? Next up on the list, I watched The Right, which has got, um, it sucks. The second I try to think of a name, it just totally goes off my, out of my mind. It's got Hannibal Lecter in it. What the heck is his name? The movie is about a, younger guy who's going into the priesthood he doesn't really believe in like god or the devil um but he ends up going to i think somewhere in rome maybe near the vatican to learn a little bit more there is a special priest there who really focuses on exorcisms and anthony hopkins so it's anthony hopkins character and he ends up teaching this younger guy about exorcisms that there are a lot of demons out there and the devil is out there and he ends up getting possessed, Anthony Hopkins does. So this younger priest really has to put all his faith in God and believe in both God and the devil to help him become unpossessed, to help exercise this demon out of Anthony Hopkins. I liked this movie, I will say. It had like the nun kind of vibes, but not to the same extent. And I thought they really built the story up, getting the young priest to that point of believing but it the climax was kind of short so it was a good movie but it wouldn't be my first choice for like catholic possession exorcism movies next up on the list is prom night and i just wanted to watch this because like i mentioned i was on a huge halloween 
Jamie Lee Curtis kick and I'd never seen prom night. So this is the original one from I think 1980 with Jamie Lee Curtis. And it follows a group of kids who have accidentally killed one of their fellow classmates in a freak accident outside of like an abandoned school. Years down the road, they're now in high school and it is prom night and somebody starts to call them and let them know that they will get revenge for what they have done and killing that small girl and keeping it a secret. So I thought this movie was fun because you don't really know who the vengeful person is. Um, it's a secret until the end. I did have an inkling, it's not like it's a huge twist, but I did have an inkling of who it is. Somebody earlier in the film is framed for it. And so you're not really sure who it is throughout the film, if it's them, because they're an escaped convict, um, or if it's somebody else of the group. So I'm not gonna tell you guys anymore, but it's not a giant twist. It's just a fun movie. Kind of got a carry feel to it with the prom night and somebody striking out to avenge the death of someone. Next up on the list is probably my favorite from the entire month, and that is The Vault. <gasps> if you guys have never heard of this, it's got James Franco in it, which I was surprised to see him in a horror role, like a very straight role, you know, no humor. And it was a film I never heard of. I think it's on Hulu maybe or Paramount, Paramount Plus. But the story goes something like there is a bank. Uh, you, We get introduced to the bank and the bank tellers. And there's a group of people that come in and essentially hold up the bank. So they're trying to rob the bank. It's two sisters and a brother. And we get the idea that the two sisters are really trying to help the brother because he's in some kind of financial trouble. And they all have kind of a dark past. When they try to rob this bank, the money is not in the vault upstairs, but it's supposed to be stored downstairs in an older vault that was mainly used throughout the 20th century into the 80s. And right off the bat, you kind of get this idea that there's something down there in the basement of the vault. There are bank tellers that won't go down there. No one's supposed to go down there alone. And there is either a creature or a spirit. There's something down there. Throughout the film, we really get the backstory of what is down there, why they're down there. And there are a lot of twists and turns in this film. And I don't want to, I don't want to ruin it. I had an inkling about one of the twists but I it's confirmed at the end and I kind of had a feeling that that was going to be the twist but the way it was done the way the movie goes I forgot about that I thought that that was a twist until the end it's like they do a really good job of steering you in a different direction and the film has so much depth to it like there are these this family who two of the members are generally good people one of the sisters is kind of a shithead and they're trying to steal this money by in helping their family but the way they go about it is not the best way but you kind of feel for them you feel sorry for them and then there's this whole other layer of like oh yeah this is a horror film there is something down there that they think that they don't know about and they think they have the whole robbery situation under control and they really don't you know there's hostages that go missing it's just it's it's so good. It's so high tense and it's so amazing. So if you guys haven't seen The Vault, definitely check it out. Okay, this video has been so long. So I'm gonna try to speed through these last ones. Um, Haunting in Connecticut, I had definitely seen that before and I just wanted to rewatch it because it had been a while. If you guys haven't seen Haunting in Connecticut, it's a great horror movie, kind of along the lines of Amityville Horror. And it's about a family of five, maybe five or six, where the teenage son has cancer and to be closer to where his cancer um, rehabilitation studies have been going on, they move into like a farmhouse in Connecticut, farmhouse style. And this house has a lot of backstory. It used to have a mortuary down in the basement where the mortician did like voodoo experiments on people. So there's a lot of spirits in that house and I'm not going to go into too much detail about that one, but it's a fun movie. It's very Amityville horror style uh, with a twist of like seances. So if you guys haven't seen it, you're behind the curve, but you should still definitely watch it. 
Next up I want to talk about is the movie X that came out just a few months ago and I wanted to see this in theaters but I just ended up forgetting about it to be honest. So I watched it a couple weeks ago. I it's interesting because I've heard such good reviews on this film and I did like it but I don't maybe I thought it was gonna be different. I think maybe I don't know. So it's about a group of young porn stars, adult filmmakers who are going out to like a countryside to film. I think they're like the country maybe in Texas or somewhere and they are filming an adult film there but the people they're staying with is an older couple who doesn't really know that's what they're filming and this is a super bible thumper city that they're going to. So you kind of already have the feeling of like somebody's not going to be okay with if they find out what they're shooting here. And I won't give that film away much. I definitely thought it was going to have skeleton key vibes if you guys have seen that movie, but it didn't go that route. So maybe that's why I didn't, I did like it, but maybe that's why I didn't love it as much as I thought I would because I thought it was going to be more along the lines of skeleton key and like an older couple. There are creepy moments in it and it is good. It's definitely a good watch. It's not something I'd probably watch anytime soon just because you know what happens. But it's still a fun watch and it's very like late 70s kind of like adult film bound chicka wow wow style. So that was fun to see how everybody was dressed and just kind of having that vibe. Very boogie nights kind of vibe but horror movie as well. Just three more on our list and the next one is Disturbing Behavior with James Marsden. I forgot how much I love this movie and it's got Katie Holmes, another great actress in it. And I forgot that this movie is so good. It's about James Marsden's family who moves somewhere into some small town. I have a feeling it's only in the Pacific Northwest, but it is him and his sister and his parents. And we find out that his older brother committed suicide um, about a year ago or so. And when they move into this town, there are like the jocks and then there's kind of the outcasts of high school. And more and more of these outcasts have become the straight A jocks. I think they call them the blue ribbons. They all wear their letterman jackets and they're really intense and they beat other people up and they're like this weird clique. And we find out that there might be some brainwashing going on within the town to kind of correct all of these students to be the perfect student. It had a lot of different twists and turns and a fun ending too. I mean, it's an older film. You guys have probably seen it before, but for some reason it reminds me of Faculty with Josh Harnett. And I thought, you know what? Might as well rewatch it. And I have a huge crush on James Marsden. He's always been such a good actor. He's so handsome. And I think he portrays characters really well. And this is kind of a different one for him to play, but it's a good kind of role for him. So I hope he does more horror films. I think he's really great at it. Next up, I watched Ninth Gate and that is with Johnny Depp. And it was from 1999. He is a book broker. So he works with wealthy people to buy books for them and sell books. Um, it's a lot of people who have very old book collections. And in particular, there is one book that there's supposed to be three copies in the world of. And it's a book about how to conjure the devil. And one book owner wants to know if his copy is legit. So he sends Johnny Depp on this crazy rambunctious chase to go find the other two books and see which one is real. But as he keeps traveling and finding these books and comparing them, the people who own those other books are dying and the books are being destroyed. So I really liked this film. It's got kind of like, I don't want to say Constantine vibes, but it's kind of shot in that way that there is some religious element to it. And there is somebody, a strong willed individual who is being attacked. I really thought this was a fun film. I'd never heard of it. Um, and it's something I'd probably watch again. I love seeing all the different older books and getting the backstory of that. And I didn't really know book brokers existed, like it makes sense. But just to see these large collections from these super wealthy people and the obsession that they have is really interesting. Last up on the list is not a horror movie. It's more of a sci-fi, but we watched it last night. So I want to mention it. And that is Spiderhead. That's with Miles Teller and Chris Hemsworth. Just came out on Netflix. And 
is a fun film. It's about a penitentiary, um, kind of like a research penitentiary, where all the inmates have a lot of freedom. They can't leave the premises, but they have their own rooms. They can come and go within the building as they want. Um, they work different duties like snack time and cleanup time, but they have these little packs on their back where different serums are inserted and there's experiments done. And what Chris Hemsworth is trying to do is find like a serum that will take away anger and aggression and leave the world a happier place where everyone can love each other. So all these inmates that have created these problems for themselves have done something to put them in this penitentiary. In the future, people won't be able to really make these bad mistakes. It's supposed to spread love and connection throughout the world. And... Miles Teller is one of the inmates. We learn that the tests that are being done are not the safest and there is some discrepancy between what the inmates think is going on and what the tests are actually for. So I'll just leave it at that, but there's a really fun soundtrack in this film. Chris Hemsworth loves 80s music. His character blasts it all the time in this penitentiary and it's really it's a fun film. It's a sci-fi. There are serious moments, but there are also really fun moments. And I would say it's definitely worth the watch. It's not a very long film and it's an easy watch if you want something kind of sci-fi-y in that realm, but not like a horror slasher. Anyways, I have been filming for 29 minutes. This has been a nice long video because I watched so many horror movies in June and I'm probably just going to keep increasing that number as we get closer to Halloween. But thank you guys so much for tuning in today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe down below and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye!